This is a Pasha Shmini, and I had different options. One day I'll do it, maybe next year, in Mitzvah Shem, to talk about the whole business of Kashas, with the time of Kashas, there's a lot of very interesting stuff on it. But this is not of an Aviyu. We all know the story of not of an Aviyu. It's one of the more painful and curious stories in the Chumash, right? And the story begins with this. In Pastor's Tisisa, which is a while ago, five, six weeks ago, Hashem is talking to Moshe Rabbeinu about the Beis HaMikdash and he tells him V'niktash B'chvaydi <coughs> V'niktash B'chvaydi means I will be sanctified with my honor. This is what it says. So Rashi says, what is the meaning of V'niktash B'chvaydi? Al tikra B'chvaydi elo b'mechubadai I will be sanctified by, by those who honor me. And Rashi says that when Hashem judges Tzadikim, when Hashem gives Tzadikim Gurus, he's misalel miskalesh. The, the world is in awe. So Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, when the Beis Midrash is going to be built, there's going to be a sanctification by Mechubadah. Moshe knows this information, doesn't share it with anybody, but he says to himself, either me or Adam, someone's going to have to be the carbon, so to speak, to sanctify the Beis Midrash. Then comes the building of the Beis Midrash, we all know the story. The Jewish people put it together, did it very quickly. They did it for Mafia and Kippur, till Hanukkah. How much time is that exactly? How much time is that? You can do the math. It's 65 days from Mafia and Kippur till Hanukkah, 65 days or 64 days. They built the base of Mikdash. They wanted to put it up, and Hashem says, no, the time for inaugurating the base of Mikdash on Hanukkah has not come yet. In a thousand years, we'll inaugurate the base of Mikdash on Hanukkah. This inauguration has to wait till August. They wait till the 23rd of Adar, they put up the Mishnah. And there are seven days of inauguration. She is Mandalorian. During those seven days, every morning they put it up, every night they take it down. There's, an, there's somebody showed him say, I still wanted to show you, I forget which, that every day they put it up and took it down three times. They put it up for Thomas of Shachim, took it apart again for Meisr. They put it up for the Meluim, took it apart, which is like a Musaf. They put it up for the Talmud Shabbat Abayim. In other words, in seven days, they took, they erected and assembled the Beis HaMikdash 21 times. Then comes the Beis HaMikdash, the eighth day. Huh? Well, this is called the Bevat and Talmud Tehid, the Lubinia Beis HaMikdash. Right? They didn't, except for Tanakh Shabbat Shabbat. That's the Halach. It's a mix of Zach. In any case, comes the eighth day, and now they're doing it over. But this time, Aisha invites the whole community, the whole Jewish people, to these spectators, and now she says, Kam echad amakemis, she hechsik mot is amerubin, a tiny space, the whole Kuala soul was gathered. And they begin to do the service. And Hashem says to Moshe, tell Adam, ki ayoyim ha-havayi ne'alechem, today the Elish is going to appear. Meaning to say this, they built Hashem a home, to various specifications. And that's exactly what it was, a building. And there was no life in it, there was no energy in it. They did all these services, they did all these rituals, they did a shulchan, a manera, a kid, you name it, they did it, and there was nothing really going on. Comes the eighth day, the eighth day promises, today I'm going to move in. The eighth day comes, the Jewish people gather, Adam does one service, and a second service, and a third service, and a fourth service, he does everything, and nothing happens. And Adam turns to his brother and says, look how profoundly you humiliated me. You brought the whole Jewish world to see that I'm a failure. And I know why it's not happening, because the Egel Azov. So it says in Chumash and Ashi, the Mesh and Anna went to the Beis and they bound. Ashi has two opinions. One is that he taught him the Maisa Kteris, I'll do the word of the Kteris. And the second opinion is when they bound. They bound, and the Shekhinah to take a rest. And the Shekhinah entered the Beis Hamikdash. It was represented by a cloud, by a fire, but the Shekhinah came to the Beis Hamikdash. And the Jewish people watched Hashem move into his home. They literally saw the Kus. Manifest in the Beis HaMikdash, right? Chassidus would say, Hashem is actually everywhere, but in the Beis HaMikdash, Hashem was revealed. Shem Shabaliraiz, Tach Baliris, when people came to the house of God, they came not only to be seen, but they saw, they saw the Kus. What it means that they saw, I don't know exactly, but it, it became, as they say, from a house a home. It was dynamic, it was a gelet, it was a warmth, it was an energy. Nadav and Aviyu were Aaron's senior sons, and they were on a pedestal. Like Aaron had four sons, Nadav and Aviv and Elazar and Nishamah. Nadav and Aviv were different than Elazar and Nishamah. Where do we see this? In the end of Pasha Kisisa, 
Rashi brings down from the Gemara the Seder Limud. How Moshe taught the Torah. He came down from Mount Sinai. Aaron came into a room. Moshe taught him the Torah. Then Aaron sat to Moshe's left. Nadav and Aviyu came in. Moshe taught them the Torah. Nadav sat to Moshe's right and Aviyu sat to Aaron's left. Then the Shkainim came in and Moshe Rabbeinu taught it to them and they sat to the right and to the left and then Klai Yisrael came in and Moshe said it the fourth time. It says Rashi Nimta. So it turns out Biyad Aaron and Bob, Biyad Nadav Aviyu Shloisha, Biyad Shkainim Shnayim, Biyad Klai Yisrael. Aaron had four Madrejis in Torah and Nadav and Aviyu had only three. The Shkainim had only two and Klai Yisrael had only one. Common sense would dictate the exact opposite. Who needs to hear it four times? The simple people. For whom is one sufficient? Aaron Akai, the opposite was true, and there's all kinds of discussions in Svadim and certainly in Hasidic. He didn't hear the same thing four times. He heard, he heard four different levels. So Aaron got, so to speak, four levels, not Aviyu got three. So not even Aviyu were on a pedestal, not only when compared to this Canaan, they were on a pedestal when compared to Allah's and Islam, to the younger brothers. Not even a real witness, the Shechina emerging into the Beth Hamikdash, they get excited, they run, they bring potatoes, incense, unlawful potatoes, that they were not commanded to bring the potatoes, the Pasuk also says, that even a Jezara, they brought an alien fire. What happens? A fire appears. It says Rashi, it wasn't one of those big noisy, combustible fires, it was like two threads that entered their nostrils and basically it chewed them. It killed them from the inside. Their bodies were whole and they died. So Moshe says to Elitzaf and ben with his brother to take them away. And she says, You don't want to destroy the Simcha. The service must go on. He says to Aaron, first of all, who was a Dibra Hashem I heard from Hashem, I knew this was going to happen. And I thought it would be either me or you, and now I see they're greater than both of us. And then he says to Aaron, you're not allowed to mourn, you have to continue doing the Avoida. The Avoida has to be done with Shimcha. Your brothers, all the house of Israel, they will mourn. That's what happens. This story is unbelievable. It's truly, it's mamish unbelievable. It's such a, the anticlimax, the contradiction, the, the dichotomy of the story is unbelievable. The Shredishness of 2449 was one of the most unique days in the history of the world. As the Ramban writes, the presence of the Abish in the Beis Amitras was equal to Har Sinai, the Nista, that's what says the Lashon and Amban. And Hasidah says the Nista means it was even greater than Martin Taylor, this state. Two of the greatest Jews who were there just disappeared. They weren't sick, they didn't have a doctor's appointment. They, just, they were plucked out of the Jewish people's midst. Here, one moment, gone the next. It was a shock. The loss of Nadav and Avi was unbelievable. They were, they were great, 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 great people. And of course, what, what happened? What did they do? And how did they make such a terrible mistake that it cost them their lives? This is the question. And there are many opinions. On the second and third page you have on front of you, in other words, the back side of the first page, your staple should be to the right. And the page after that, I printed a Rabbeinu B'chayim. The Rabbeinu B'chayim compiles all the reasons found in all the spot. It gives six explanations for why another one of you died. Okay, you guys all turn the page. Let's read it. Let's read all six reasons. I made an arrow on the bottom of page, top page S, but you have to go three lines from the bottom. Okay, three lines from the bottom. Did I underline all of yours? I only underline mine. Okay. Six reasons as to what was the sin of Nadav and Avi. Rashi brings two. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar brings six. And here we go. Three lines from the bottom of page, top page S. Okay. Yes, Amen. The first opinion is Al Eish Zara. It was the alien fire. He doesn't speak about the potatoes. He speaks about the fire. It wasn't the incense. It was the Asia Zod. It was the alien fire. <coughs> Next line, two lines from the bottom. The Yashemim Shtuye Yayin. There are those who say that they were drunk. This reason Rashi brings as well. The proof that they were drunk was that it, immediately after their death, Hashem says, Al-Nakayin, you can't drink and go into the base of Mikdash. 
Last line on the page, Rabbi Sai, the Yeshem in opinion number three. Hayru halacha b'snei Rabban. They passed in halacha in front of the teacher Meishe Rabbeinu. Rashi brings this reason as well, because it says Allah Hayrus. Turn the page. First line on top of page Tav Tzadik. The Yesh Oimrim al Shahayu Oimrim b'li Nashim. They refuse to get married. Okay. Rabbeinu Bachai gives the Balabata Shabbat. Nobody was good enough for them. I don't know, Kain. Son, Kain did get like you know the old joke about this guy who can't get married because no girl is good enough. So they sent him to the yeshiva of, the, of Anovim, of the humble ones, to become a, a humble person. He'll be humble, he'll be able to get married. Anyway, he goes to the yeshiva of humility, and he graduates with flying calls, he gets himself a smith in Anovim. He comes back, and they offer him the same shit that they offered him before. So he says to the shatchan, this shit that you already offered me. He says, yeah, so... He said, we already agreed that the shidduch is not appropriate to me. So the guy says, I understand, but now you're humble with thinking that maybe for the guy who up to me, so they don't understand. Madoch, when I had the other milers, I was a god and a tactic and a soldier. She wasn't good enough. Now I'm humble too, she's certainly not good. <laughs> anyway, so Rashi, Rabbi Rebbe says that nobody was good enough in other than of you. But we're going to see, sorry, so much for your humility. <laughs> we're we're going to see what we can do with this. Now, Five lines on the top of the page, you have reason number five, Yesh Eimim, Al Krivas Har Sinai, there are those who say because they came close to Har Sinai, Shehitzitzu Yesh Eimidai. They looked at the Shechina too much, and Hashem didn't want to kill him on the spot and ruin that party, so he saved it for this party. And they passed it. Meitzitz Menacharak, right? To look. Then three lines after that, we Hashem them al shenich nesul b'mikdash betuma. At the end of the day, Hashem makes the unclean sin tuma. And each one of these opinions, the Rebbe Nebuchadnezzar supports. He brings a remez from a vav and a pasuk. But fine. Six. In other words, the Rebbe Nebuchadnezzar does all the work for you. Every medrash, every man of Chazal consolidated the Rebbe Nebuchadnezzar. By the way, this Rebbe Nebuchadnezzar is not my parsha, nor is it nachri meit. It's the end of mitzvah. This is one of those tricky ones. It's hard to find this Rebbe Nebuchadnezzar because it's not what you would think it is. It's in tzav pashas mitzayda. He's explaining the connection between mitzayda and achemes. Six reasons. What are they again? Age zara the alien fire. Now keep in mind. I tell you again. He doesn't say the ktoides. It wasn't the incense. It was the age zara. It was the alien fire. Number two, they were drunk. Number three, they passed in the halacha for the meshra beinu. Number four, they wouldn't get married. Number five, they ca- they got too comfortable by hasinai. And number six, they wanted to make mitzvah betum. On the drunk one, we can ask the Shaila, a very simple Shaila. If Hashem told Aaron afterwards, don't do that right when you're drunk, so theoretically you should have warned another Ravi also before he punished him. Good, good the Kasha. Very good the Kasha. Good the Kasha. There's probably to do some to this Kasha, but the Kasha. The problem with all of these six answers is that if you think about who another Ravi were, something does, something it doesn't sound enough. If not of an Aviyu, where the nation added, and they were the card to sanctify the Beis Hamikdash to make this so-called Kiddush Hashem, what happened? They had shikas, they wouldn't get married. Why? Not of an Aviyu, a lady shalalem, a stamayid. You tell him to do something, he doesn't. You tell him not to do, he doesn't do it. Not of an Aviyu was so great. How could we make sense out of the fact that this is a terrible Aveda? It cost them their life. Not of an Aviyu is one of the most Frequently discussed topics in Hasidus. I mean, every dash and every Lubavitcher, you can't go by three, four weeks without mentioning another one of you, this business of Ratzel Vesheis. And there are literally dozens of my modern men, scores of Sikhs, that talk about another one of you and their so called sin. The source of Hasidus is the Erechaim HaKadosh. So I printed the Erechaim, read the original, the first page, the one that you skipped, and I made an arrow on the left side of the page. We're going to begin, if you go back to the beginning. First page, where the staple is. On the staple screen, you're right. The Eva Chaim HaKadosh has the same question. How could Nadav and Avihu have sinned so grossly? So now, boy, say, before we get to this text, let me just tell you what I printed on that. You have a lot of pages here, right? My pages are, well, I call them my, my weekly guilt trip. <laughs> but this one is good. It's really worth pursuing. And I actually made arrows and underlines in different places. You should have no trouble finding things. What I printed here is, have you had a Chaim HaKadosh? 
The Rechaim HaKodesh is going to mention the concept of Misaf Neshikin. Death to a kiss. So I copied for you the Gemara and Baruchis of Ches that speaks about death through a kiss. I copied for you another Rabbeinu Bechaye, and there's an arrow where Rabbeinu Bechaye talks about the concept of death through a kiss. And then I copied for you the last three pages of the Hemshech Achrei Meis Tafresh Memtesh. Tafresh Memtesh is 1889. That year, the Rebbe Rashab said a very famous Hemshech Achrei Meis Memtesh. The Fidik Rebbe writes, the Rebbe Rashab was still very young at the time. He wasn't officially Rebbe. And the Achrei Meis Memtesh made a student, all the big man still, and was very excited by it. The, it's, it, the whole thing talks about Nodav Aviyu. It speaks about Abba Shedich and Sulapardis. That whole sugi of Rashi Yudad Shev. I printed only the end. Now, of course, we're not doing it all, but you're welcome to keep it. And I'm sure you understand the hint. <laughs> but the point is, we're going to do as much as we can. Here's what I want to do. I want to read the Erechaim HaKadosh with you. I want to spend a few minutes talking about Mises Nishikin. And I would like to try this. Can we superimpose the Erechaim HaKadosh on each of the six reasons that Rabbeinu B'chaya brings. In other words, Rabbeinu B'chaya gives very technical reasons, technical avedas. Is it a sin? It's very hard to accept that people of Nadav Nadir's caliber would have done a sin in convention. It has to be a neshama to the sin. So the neshama to the sin is described in the Erechaim HaKadosh. So we're going to read the neshama of the sin in the Erechaim, and then we're going to see if we can show how each one of these six concepts actually is consistent with what the Rechaim HaKadosh says. In other words, can we demonstrate that the Aveda was not a Poshet Aveda, of, of a lack of respect to Meishat Aveda, going to the Bethlehem, by the way, Bethlehem doesn't mean Mamish Bethlehem. They forgot to wash their hands and feet, as the Rebbe Mechaim says. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to read the Rechaim, then we'll talk a little bit about Mises Neshikin, and then we're going to go back to the six reasons and figure out, see, if we can connect the Rechaim HaKadosh to each one of the six reasons. Of course, we have a little help. In Hasidus, one of them for sure is explained. Possibly, no, two of them for sure are explained. The Eish Zara and the Shriya Yayin is explained in Hasidus. But the other four will have to use a little bit of our imagination. Not too much, because they also discussed in other Yanin. But to see if we can it's show that the Raveda was a Ruchni Zdeka Veda, not a Pashti Zdeka Veda. So without any further ado, let's go to the Rechaim HaKadosh. As you see, the Rechaim HaKadosh is enormous, but we're going to skip all the technical explanations and go straight to the deeper explanation. You see where I made the arrow? You see where I made the arrow? Can you find the arrow, yes? It says, this is the beginning of Pashat Achimesh, by the way, it's not in Shemini either. It says, Achare Mois Vegoimet, after Moshe and Aharon, I'm sorry, after another Rebbe had passed away, Hashem says to Moshe to tell Aaron after the death of another and that he should go into the Holy of Holies, but not whatever he wants. Ki in b'zay shel yam no kodesh only, and yim kippur and so on. Says the Rabbi the Erechaim Hakodesh. Varavai el Moshe, Hashem is speaking to Moshe Rabbeinu, and he's mentioning to them that another and Aviu died. As the Erechaim HaKadosh, he's not only mentioning that they died, he's describing Derech Nisasan, how they died, why they died, the form of death of another one of you. And he says, Alzeh Oymen HaKosov, the Pesach says, Bikarvasam Lifnei Hashem, they died when they approached God. Now, what's the Pshut Eishel Mikra? They died when they approached God. It was sinful to approach God. They were not allowed to approach God. They approached God, they got punished and died. Says the no. The death was the approaching of God. Pirush. Shenistarvu lifnei el ha'elyon. They approached the supernal light. Bechibas ha'kodesh in their love of holiness. Stop right here. Think about it. Rabbi Yisrael. Now the Rabbi were big tzaddikim. Very big tzaddikim. And they were also big oinim. They were deep people. They were great men. Yeah? They lived their whole lives for this moment. They lived their whole lives for this moment. They were going to be servants of God in a base hamikdash where you could literally feel His presence. They worked a week, nothing happened. They got up in the morning of the eighth day, they worked, nothing happened. And then the Shekhinah emerged. Who could blame them for being excited? Everything they lived for happened. They saw the course. 
They ran to it. It's a, it's a natural response of a person. It was inappropriate, but it was based on not something negligent or something simple. They saw the course. They ran to God. You see, Abish, that you're wrong. And Abnis Nemanah once said to the Rebbe in Yechidis, that's when he was a young Bachar in Lubavitch, whenever the Bachar saw the Rebbe, they ran away. He says, today, hey, come here to America. He says, whenever the Rebbe comes, all the Bachar are running towards the Rebbe. He doesn't understand something. He says, what happened to the old shame that Bachar had the Rebbe should look at you and see all your Avedis? What the Rebbe told him? He says, I get it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right. Not when I saw the Shechina, so they ran to the Shechina. Let's continue. And they caused their death. And then I've been in the Chamechel Tzadik. It's the secret of a kiss. Shabbat Meisho Tzadikim with which Tzadikim pass away. So the Chamechel Kodesh says, not only were not punished, not even I view didn't do something wrong in the gross sense of the word. They ran to holiness and it caused, they, they, they were so caught into the holiness that the Neshama left their goof. And he adds, <laughs> All Tzadikim die that way. So what's the Aveda? Allah Shaha Hefresh, who the distinction is, Shaha Tzadikim, when it comes to Tzadikim, Hanashikom, Mishkarev, Zalayim. Hashem gives a father a certain number of years. When his time comes, Hashem kisses him. But they don't go to the kiss. You're not allowed to go to the kiss. You're supposed to want to live. The Elohim niskan of Allah. They ran to the kiss. That's the translation of the words. Because Hashem listening to they came close to God. It doesn't say because Hashem listening to Hashem meisu. They came close to God, therefore they died. No, no, no. Because Hashem listening to Hashem vayamusu. They're coming close to God caused their demise. Betais this vav with the additional vav them is a hint. A cause of the pasuk has atheists in the vein of Elchayim Hakadosh. If you can translate each one of these words, I give you a medal. Hafloas chiba sa tzadikim. The wondrousness of the love of tzadikim to Hashem. And they knew they would die. They didn't stop themselves. Mikiro from coming close. Listen to these words. To the sweetness and 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 the sweetness. Of the kush. Of kalish and shesh until they died. Now of course, they <laughs> it doesn't mean seven times sweetness. Vekus means Cleaving, I have no idea what cleaving means, but you'll speak to your local rabbi. Nimus means sweetness. Arevis means sweetness. Yudimus means friendship. Chavivus means love. Neshikis means a kiss. And Neshikis means sweetness. sweetness again. So, you have homework. The rabbi, the Sikhs always brings the shame. Arevis, Neshikis, Yudimus. I was in Erechaim and It was a big mokumo. So, what happened to the other They saw the kus, they ran to it, and they were kissed. They trespassed. They got too close, and they were sucked in. An illustration of this is the story that the Rebbe told after Yud Shvat and the Fidikim passed away. The mice of the Helika Badichere and the Helika Rujine. But the Holy Badichere said when he passed away that he's not going to go into Gan Eden until he brings Mashiach. So he went to Gan Eden and he didn't go in. So what they do? The Malachim of Gan Eden said Kedusha. The Badichere was a passionate fellow. He felt the Kedusha in Gan Eden. As they arranged the spring, he jumped into Ganadin to say Kaddish, and then they didn't let him leave. <laughs> the Hele Gerushina knew, so he said, they're going to say Kedusha, I'm not going to be pulled in, I'm going to stay outside. So the Gerushina passed away, he came to Lamaila, they said Kedusha, he refused to go into Ganadin, so they brought the Ganadin to the Gerushina. They super, in other words, not they tried to suck him into Ganadin, they superimposed the Ganadin upon him, the energy was so powerful, he was taken in by Ganadin to train. So the Rebbe said that the Rebbe the Shved, the Zriyadik Rebbe, knows both tricks. He won't get tricked. Say, In other words, what's the concept of a kiss being drawn into the, to the light? Being drawn into the light. The energy of babies to draw the person in. So let's talk about Nisus Nishik in a little bit. But before we do, I want to show you Gemara. Not a lot, just a couple of lines in the Gemara. Go to the third page. And I underline them so you don't have to look too hard. <laughs> Now 
Rav Nachman by Yitzchak Omar. Rav Nachman by Yitzchak says that the word Ve'ef Mitzoy, what the Gemara was talking about before, Zumisa refers to death. Shinema Kodesh says, Lamus Teitzoy, that the word Mitzoy and Teitzoy has to do with death. Tanya Nami Hochi brings the raya that there's a connection between Teitzoy and death. It says in Hebraisa, Cham Meyet Shloy Shemine Misa Nivdu There are 903 different forms of death. I wish they could make Shenema, as the Prophet says, Lomus Teitzois. Teitzois, the Gematria Hachi Hava, the word Teitzois is numerically equivalent to 903. So, oh, a good moment. A welcome, welcome. That means to say this, 903 different forms of death. Shenema, okay. Koshen Shevakula, the most severe of all 903, is Ashkenem. Is a death called Askele. It's some kind of a st- stomach disease. Naicha Shabakula, the easiest of all, hello, welcome, welcome, thanks for coming, is Nishika, is a kiss. And then the Gemara says, Askele, Damya, a person who dies from Askele, what does it feel like? Kishidra, the Gavava, the Am, the Lacheri, Nashra. Essentially, it means that the person is walking through thorns with, with a fur outfit, right? The thorns rip off. The wool as the person moves. So the death of Askara, you feel like your flesh is being ripped from your body. The Ikad Amri, Kipituri Bifivoshet. Others say that it means Kipituri Bifivoshet, like your throat is being suffocated, like a, um, something is squeezing your throat. Nishika, the death of a kiss, Dani is comparable to Mishchal Benisha Mechalba. Like removing a hair from a cup of milk. How painful is it? Not moving a hair from a body. To remove a hair from a cup of milk, it's painful. The death of Tzadik, there's different degrees of death. Some more painful, others less painful. The most painful death is the death of Ashkara. The least painful is the death of Nishik. Now, Rabbi, I want to talk to you about Nishik. On the next page, you have the Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar. We'll see if we'll have time to read the Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar inside because I do want to get back to the other Rabbeinu B'chayah. But let's talk about Nishikin for a moment, okay? How do most people die? And by the way, what I'm about to tell you is in this Rabbeinu B'chayah. I gave this class yesterday, but I haven't... I gave the class yesterday, I didn't pick up the second source. And then I took the Rabbeinu, I wanted to show you this Rabbeinu B'chayah, and I realized that, hey, this is where I took it from. And I looked at the Rabbeinu B'chayah years ago, and I... You quote things, you forget your sources. How do most people die? It's very simple. The machine runs out. That's all. A body is an amazing creation. Right? What's amazing about the creation of an organic thing or a living thing is not just its complexity and its order, but its regenerative power. Right? Whether you know this or not, every few months you are made from different physical stuff. Every cell in your body is replaced. Literally. Literally. It happens slowly and gradually. We don't realize it. But we literally regenerate it. Just like there are animals that molt, that lose their skin every year. And that's a very distinct event. Every cell in an organic system is renewed periodically over the course of our lives. I, but the brains, I don't know. The brain cells last very long. You say, you say one word. I'll just say something to support that. They do autopsies on patients who have received or transplant, and the, um, the, the the genetic profile of the heart cell not kidding. of the transplanted heart right. resembles the recipient in the blood. Unbelievable! Mm. That's amazing. But, but brain cells do last a lifetime. No, Mr. Zay, brain cells. Does it make a difference? Does it make a difference? Yeah. The so cell now, cell what they're looking at is that you know, this, these come from stem cells. So stem cells are searching the body all the way to find all, all, all the... All what comes from stem cells? cells have the capacity mm-hmm. to become any kind of cell. Kind of cell. So these cells, <coughs> stem cells are finding damaged heart cells and they are replacing the damaged heart cells. But they have the donor, um, the donor constituency rather than the recipient. And the recipient rather than the donor. My question to you is, isn't there a shortage of stem cells in a, in a grown adult? Isn't that the whole thing? 
whereas you have a big area of damage during the time now. So in terms of we talk about normal degeneration, right we have sufficient stem cells for that. But the brain cells do last very long. You say, I think the brain cells don't regenerate. The, the brain, well, this is a controversy. But what the brain cell is very interesting. The old model, the old uh, idea, concept, was that a brain cell was static. Okay. Now, you find that brain cells are capable of what's called authorization, which means that the, the trunk will remain the same, but it will grow new roots and new, new leaves and new, uh, new branches. So Even a full adult? Full adult. After 25? Yeah. Constant, everlasting. In other words, you can, you, can, you, you can stimulate a brain cell that has been damaged to sprout if you stimulate it. That's the whole idea of therapy. Right. It stimulates the cell. That if the cell is alive and uh, it has a weak connection between one neuron and the other, so if you give a therapy, so it will branch and overrise and make new connections with the cells around it. Yeah. But there, there's, there's yeah. no real regeneration in brain cells. Am I correct? The cell itself. Yeah. The cell itself is the original one. It's static. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, this concept of regeneration is Tati and the Rebbeinu Bechaye. It's interesting. The Rebbeinu Bechaye in Pashas Bereshis speaks about eternal life as a biological possibility, as a natural thing. The Rebbeinu Bechaye lived 700 years ago, and he calls it Koyach Hamora. Hamora is the word Tmura, to replace. The Rebbeinu Bechaye describes a biological process that was discovered in the last century, Medzim Hundet Yatrik. And he says, theoretically, if the body is healthy, it should be able to regenerate indefinitely. And the question is actually, why isn't it that way? The fact of the matter is that because of the etadas, the power of regeneration is limited. In other words, as we get older, the cells get weaker. And even the new cells that are born have greater tendencies to it not being perfect. And that's why there are all kinds of cancers and all kinds of other stuff. Basically, my point that I say is, a person dies because the machine breaks. That's almost like a car. You buy a car, it's got a lot of parts. Some parts are replaceable, other parts are not replaceable. At a certain point, it's just, it's just, you can't fix it anymore. You gotta get a new one. That's how the body dies. When a person dies, there's a tumor attached. A spiritual tumor and a halachic tumor. The concept of tumor means there's a little life. In no life, there's no tumor. There's no tumor in a lump of stone. A little life. Enough life for Klippa to want to draw, draw. Not too much life to overwhelm the Klippa. So Klippa finds itself in place of weak life, and that's what Tumah is. Just like parasites, just like um, fungi, just like all kinds of uh, bacteria can multiply when there is weakness. Death is the epitome of weakness. There's enough life for Klippa to attach itself, and that's what Tumah is. The Gemara says there's 903 forms of death. This rule applies to 902 of them. A person dies because the machine broke down. Oscar is the worst form of death. I remember learning this Gemara and wondering, could you imagine having a list of the whole my order? The Gemara just gives you the bottom and the top and just figure it out on your own. Don't say all of them? No. It just lists the best and the worst. Yeah. But I'm sure in some holy book someplace it says what they are. And that's why there's Tumah. The death through a kiss is a totally different process. It's not about the death of the body. It's about the departure of the soul. A tzaddik dies from a kiss. The, it's not because the machine broke down. If the tzaddik the kissed the tzaddik and drew the neshama out. Which explains why by tzaddikim we say there's no tumor. The Gemara says in Ksubis, there's different gifts to it. The Gemara, the Pesach, and the Rabbeinu B'chayah brings on this gift and this page, the next page. That When Rabbeinu Gwain passed away, when Rabbeinu passed away, there was no Kohuna. The Kohunim went to the Mesa Kvodesh. Kohunim carried his remains in the belief that Rabbeinu Kvodesh was not Metana. Why? The Rabbeinu B'chayah Kvodesh says, why? Because he was Mesa Benishiki, he died from a kiss. Tumma happens because the body dies. There's a little enough life for Klippa to be interested, but not too much life. When Sadiq can pass away, the body never died. The neshama was removed. 
And this explains what says in the holy books, and we all know it from history, that the Guf Kodesh of the Tzaddik does not decompose. The body never died. It's still alive. The Nisham is not manifest. The Nisham is not revealed. The person has to be buried. You have to say Shiva, you have to say Kaddish, and the Dinam of Avelis. But spiritually, the body never stopped, never, never broke down. And as a result, there's no Tumah attached. This is such Mises Nishikin. This is how can pass away. Nada van Avil passed away from a kiss. Moshe Rabbeinu passed away from a kiss. Arna Kain passed away from a kiss. Miriam and Avil passed away from a kiss. kiss. Rabbeinu B'chai says, Rabbeinu Akadosh passed away from a kiss, and so on and so forth. What was the sin? You now know how to go to the kiss. You have to wait for the kiss to come to you. And Nada van Avil couldn't contain himself. In the sikhs of the rabbi, this content of the rabbi is discussed literally in 101 sikhs. The rabbi goes deeper and deeper and deeper until he reaches a point where the rabbi argues that another rabbi didn't sin at all. There was zero wrong with what another rabbi did. Zero. There was nothing wrong with what another rabbi did. But after they did it, Hashem said no more. For them it was acceptable. A tzaddik and the love of another Ravi receive the shechin and he runs through it, more power to him. After another Ravi died, Hashem says to Aaron, this is not what I want. For another Ravi it was okay. They represented a certain specific category of service. No more. From now forward, you have to live. Hashem said a life was not created for chaos, it was created for order. Live in this world. Like the halacha is, and Hasidus talks about this as well. A Kayin Godel could not go into the Kedush HaKadoshah if he wasn't married. At Kedekach, there's an opinion in the Mishnah that says that they would prepare for him a second wife in case his wife died. Because the Kayin Godel's wife died, they had to keep it, and they had to send somebody else. He had to have Ba'ad Beis, he had to have a home, he had to have a life. The only person historically who was commanded by God not to have a life was Moshe Rabbeinu. The only person in Tata, you have a concept which the Hagel and Catholicism is so popular, called celibacy was only by Mesha, Vatapay Ahmedi Madi. That's it. Only Mesha. Not Aden, not Shmuel Hanavi, not Elia Koy, not Ishaya Hanavi, not Chisya Hanavach, not Yirmiya. Go through history. The Gedele Yisrael was supposed to be married. The Gedele Yisrael was supposed to be married. She separated from her. That's what says in Chumash, that when they became the Vim, she prayed to clap her hands and she said, Oh no, I feel bad for their wives. So means what are you talking about? She says, don't you know? A prophet doesn't live with his wife. And she says, what kind of nonsense is that? In Pasha's Ba'aleicha. The Gimnashi. Okay, so you have to live in this world. So no of you didn't do a crime. But after them, Hashem says no more. This is the Nisham of no of you's sin. They ran to the kiss. A grace of the all these which chatoim? That they went to where there was some, uh, they went Wait, wait, wait. Now let's examine this. Here's our question. Let's go back to the Rebbeinu Bechayim, the first Rebbeinu Bechayim. And by the way, there's this Gishmak is Tafir, the Maimed is Gava. Everything I printed here is Maimed. I didn't write one word of it. There's not an original word here. Okay, that's what's good about it. Let's go back and revisit the six reasons that Rebbeinu Bechayim gives and ask. Before you do that, so I'll ask you, is there any, you, you, you didn't go inside with this, Amar, um, 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 uh, is, is any of this referring to what you just said? Oh, I, I repeated what's written there. Oh, uh, it's all inside. Absolutely, every word of it. I mean, every word of it. The Ekerat is, according, is in this, Amar is a Maima, or is this part of Rebbe? This is Rebbe Nebuchadnezzar, and this is the interpretation of Mises Nishik, and I made an arrow. Yeah, so this is the whole thing. It's there on the top of the next page. He's a Rishon. say... Well... Rishonim say what you and I say in four pages, in four lines. You have to learn how to read it. But the Rishai is right. It's such a beautiful piece. But we're going back to the first Rabbeinu Bechai, page top page. And we're going to visit each one of the six reasons and see if we can infuse it with the Nishami, with Nishika. What's the first reason? Yash Emrim. Al Ejdara, they brought an alien fire. Now, I said it twice already, I'll say it for the third time, so we'll have a chazak. <coughs> it doesn't say the Tkairis, it says the Ejdara. The Rishayim didn't talk about it. Actually, not so much, but other Rishayim talked about it, they understood it. The problem was that the fire was Zahar. 
technically what this means, in other words, from a perspective of halacha, what does this mean? Page top page test. Technically, what does this mean? There's many carbonas brought in the base of Mikdash. One of the carbonas is the carbon of Eish. It was a mitzvah to bring fire. Afa pisha Eish yed in Hashemayim milmaila mitzvah lahav min hadit. It didn't take. He's supposed to bring a fire. Every morning we say Abaye, and there was something called Shnei Gizri It was a service of putting wood to bring, right? Isha, to create a fire. The crime of Nadav and Avi Yom wasn't that they brought Kedis. They took, they made a new fire. They should have taken the existing fire, right? In the base of Mikdash, there was two Marachas, three Marachas, whatever the case was. They should have taken fire from the base of Mikdash, they brought Eishazar. How does Hasidus explain Eishazar? Eishazar means fire that comes from the outside. Fire that comes from the outside in a very grove, in a very unrefined sense, means like Avodah right? Zarah. There's the fire of serving Hashem, and then there's Eish Zahar. There's a fire which is outside of that. But you can't accuse one of an view of that. So you need to explain the concept of Eish Zahar in a very, very fine way. And the fine interpretation of Eish Zahar, and like I said, if you look at the, the Yishraelim and Pasha Shemini, and our Pasha, they talk a lot about Eish Zahar. The issue is as follows. In Avodah Hashem, there's supposed to be fire. But the fire is never allowed to be disconnected from the coal. The concentration of heat is the coal. The expression of heat is the flames. The flames do a dance. They make a lot of noise. They have no intensity. The coal is quiet. The heat, the power is in the coal. In Avedis Hashem, this is called Murgash and Bilti Murgash. Serving Hashem within your passion versus serving Hashem with outer passion. Demonstrative energy versus internal energy. A yid's avoider is to have not just a fire, but a deep fire. Shallow external fires for another than other you. In the Hasidic Sprach, it's chitenius, it's zor, it's alien. What are you getting so excited? Sha, sha, sha. Inside. Is there a most of what is brought down with the Hillel Gremdetz and Machedek? That somebody once asked the Tzamachedek on Shavuos, when all the Rabbanim used to come, I see Shavuos, when the sea split, was, what was Meishe Rabbeinu doing? Keith Yamsev, what was Meishe Rabbeinu doing when the sea split? At the end of it, it is the event Kaltenbrand. Kaltenbrand means cold fire, hot ice. He was burning like a, like a, like a, like a, like a torch, and you saw nothing on the outside. That's not Eish Zara. That's called Eish Pnimi. It's an inner fire. Eish Zara means that the fire was hysterical. It was hyper. It was too outside and not sufficiently inside. For not the Vanaviyu, this was an Aveda. It was a chesaron. It was a fault. It was a flaw. It was not good. And I'll tell you a couple of stories. I'll tell you one story. I don't have time. So a couple, I'll tell you one more story. <laughs> time is our number one enemy. The Alter Rebbe was about his spoilers. The Alter Rebbe used to demonstrate his passions very, very much. I thought he used to pound his fist in the wall when he dived until his hands would bleed. They, they patted his walls. Alter Rebbe could go into Vegas and literally roll on the floor and lose all sense of time and space. Alter Rebbe once asked Achosit to show him a maimer. He asked Achosit to show him the anach of the maimer he said. He showed him the maimer, there's a good maimer. <laughs> Alter Rebbe had no idea what he said. The Mithra Rebbe was ice. When the Mithra Rebbe davened, he didn't budge. But he would sweat so profusely that on Shabbos, if he touched his kapata with a shadow of schita, of squeezing, they would change his satuk several times in during davening. But he stood like, 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 like a block of ice. The Mithra Rebbe <laughs> hired Shamashim who were profound fools. The servant Mithra was very stupid. And it was by design. They didn't want them to understand what was going on. But as a result, there was certain kind of tricks that you should play. For example, for a fee, if he gave the Shamash, I'm sorry, a 10 ruble, which was a lot of guilt, he would let you witness the Mithra Rebbe down. So it's brought down as Purich Shidim. If you paid him the fee, he opened the book of Mithra Rebbe's room, Mithra Rebbe standing in the middle of the room, like a block of ice, facing the other way. He brings the Shidim in, he walks over to the Rebbe, he puts his arms under the Rebbe's armpits, turns him around. 
The Chassidim say, no, what are you doing? He says, don't worry, you have no idea what's going on. You saw? Yeah, out. He turned him back around, and the Mitzvah Rebbe had no clue, no idea. Still like a block of ice, he wasn't in this world. The Mitzvah Rebbe had a contemporary, a good, good friend, who then became his competitor. His name is Abadim Alevi, Abadim Yisrael if you would meet the Mitzvah Rebbe, the Rebbe Halevi Mitzvah you would assume that the Rebbe was the son and the Mitzvah Rebbe wasn't. Because the Rebbe Halevi was much more similar to the Alter Rebbe than the Mitzvah Rebbe was. Because he, like the Alter Rebbe, was very passionate, very demonstrative, very excited. But he wasn't the Alter Rebbe. In the Hasidic Shishprach, there was a drop of Chomet. How many are you talking about? The Tzadik Gomer. The Rebbe Halevi Mitzvah Shalom, the Gomer, Baruch HaKedish, the Baruch but with yes, the Alter Rebbe, there was a tiny, in that, his slashes, there was a tiny drop of Chomish. So there was a mighty bit of Meisha. A mamish, a tifa chabad Meisha. The Isaac Homer was not Remza Chassid. He was a contemporary of the Aron Sinashele. He was probably a little younger than him, but he was older than the Mitzvah Rebbe Zichet. No, a little bit. And he was the Mitzvah Remza Chassid. The Alter Rebbe left the Travor that the Alter Mitzvah Rebbe should be the only successor. So all the Alter Rebbe's real chassidim stayed by the middle Rebbe. Some left, but the didn't stay in the middle Rebbe. But the Isaac Homer was a personality. His Homer was a big person. He wasn't a schlepper. And if Isaac Homer wanted to check out the battle, he wanted to check him out. He had no intentions of becoming a chassid, but he wanted to see if Adam Zavoyed. He had a tremendous following. He had an unbelievable magnetism. So he came to Strashel. And about my lady, he asked my mother that I printed, Chidus Chabad. The Rebbe said once that he would print it even himself. A Gavalt, he was a very prolific writer with a lot of Chidus. It's the Alt Rebbe's Taylor with the Yudim. He starts saying Chidus. And he's sitting in his chair. As the mind gets involved, he becomes more animated, and he's going like this, swinging his hands, and he's screaming, and he's talking. And he gets up, he's standing. He's standing, and there's so much energy that he gets up on the chair. But the Rabbi Isaac Homeless sees that he has no idea what's going on. His goof is operating by itself. The Rabbi Adam is in a different world. His goof is reacting, but he has no idea that he's standing. And he's standing on the chair. Then he's standing on the table. And he's swinging his hands, and if Isaac is watching, if Isaac had an Eid of Kisha, he was amazing. If Isaac said once, I don't have a Ruach HaKedosh, but I'm a maven in Ruach HaKedosh. Until the mind was winding down. Almost finished, Rav Isaac came down to earth. And, I'm sorry, Rav Aaron came down to earth. And Rav Isaac noticed that Rav Aaron noticed that he's standing on the table. And that he made the conscious decision, eh, I'm almost finished, I'll stay for two more seconds. At that instant, the moment that Eisel notices that Aaron notices that he's standing on the table and he decided to remain, you hear a voice in the back of the room. Arke, Arke, Krichar up from Tish. Arke, Arke, get off the table. In the in a void of the Tzad Gomor, this is Eish Zara. None of the Navi who brought a Korn. Ktedis. The Aveir is not in the Ktedis. Again, we all know what happened to Kairach when he brought Ktedis. And there also it says that's the Aish Zerei Hola. I think it says Lush and Aish Zerei I'm not sure. The problem was the Aish. Ketedis is the deepest Avoida. Ketedis is different than Kabanis. What's in the Ketedis and Kabanis? Kabanis have a big fire. Ketedis is cold. Ketedis is Pneumius. Ketedis is called Pneumius Alev. Ketedis is Bechak Ketedis Katane. Ketedis is the Aramaic word for Kesher. There was too much Shkudim in the Ketedis. They brought Ketedis. But they weren't these dapkos, they weren't one with the Ketedis. In other words, there was a lack of readiness on their part for what they were doing. They were running to a kiss, that's fine. But when you run to a kiss, you have to be a kid for that kiss. And when you're running to a kiss, it expresses itself in age Zara, there's a deficiency. There's a sudden. So certainly a mitre yitimid epshute, eish zada means a eish zada, a foreign fire. In other words, it didn't take a fire for the marochus, but the mitre But the primius of it, the neshama of it is, that in other navius, there was, there was too, much, too much passion, too much bread. And this too much bread, again, the chassidish expression, a subedish of a chassidish rabbein will be, with a drop of chomet. And there's no chomet in the base of the mitre. There's no chomet. 
You want to say something? Is it the same by the mitzvah rabbi? It's more, it was more cleanish? Completely cleanish. Than by the rabbi? Yeah, totally. They were different personalities. But Allah had unbelievable chitzenius. Okay? Next. The Yashemim Shtuya Yayin. Now this one doesn't require any effort because there's hundred my mother on this. Right? And we're coming from Purim. And Evi Lubavitcher knows the Sikh of Kamrava the Shachar and Abzeda that Nichnis Yayin Yatsu Seid wine doesn't only mean literal wine although it means that too. It means Yayna Shel Teda the secrets of the Teda. When you learn the secrets of the Teda you come close to Hashem. When you come close to Hashem you've got to be careful. As the Gemara says, and the last two pages of the pamphlet that I gave you are the Maimed of Nadav and Aviyu, but they also speak about the Abash and the Padish, the Gemara Chagiga. The Gemara says there were four sages of Shalik who went to the Padish. Rabbi Akiva, Ben Azai, and Ben Zayma, whose names by the way are both Shimon, and Alisha Ach, Alisha Ben Avoya. Ben Zayma hits it to Mace. Ben Zayma looked and he died. Ben Azai hits it to Nifka. Ben Azai looked. And he was nifta, he was affected, he became crazy. Elisha hits it, the kitzit, the natias. He looked and he cut down the trees. Remember, we had the discussion about how the trees of his end, this is the Lash Magamara, kitzit, the natias, and nifdala, remember? Kitzit, the natias. Rabbi Akiva, nifnas, the shalom, the shalom. He went in in peace and he came out in peace. When you go into that world, you have to be very perfectly prepared. And the Rebbe says in 100 Sikhs, the reason that Akiva survived is because he went in with the intent of coming out. The Akiva knew what another one of you did was not correct. Maybe for them it was correct, but it's not a lifestyle. It's not a derech. Life is to be in this world. Before Rabbi Akiva entered, he put for himself a safety valve, a spiritual safety valve to get out. He wants to come close to the Abish He wants to experience what an effect is a kiss, but he's not going to stay there. He's going to return. The others went in and didn't have an, ent- an exit strategy, as they say in politics today. And because they didn't have an exit strategy, they, they never were affected adversely. So see, this explains that drinking wine means to immerse yourself in the wine of the intoxicating dimension of Teda. To drink the intoxicating dimension of Teda and to be affected favorably, right? What does it say in all the holy books? There's Yayin HaMeshakir and there's Yayin HaMeshamech. There's wine that intoxicates, makes you sick, and the wine that makes you joyous. Who's the classic example of Yain HaMashakir? Huh? Mayach. Vayeisht men amayim vayayin vayishkar. Look at all the Siddish Svarim, all the Svarim, even Trisha Shudish al-Mikra, what Mayach got drunk on wine. Mayach was ish tzadik tomim. A filo b'day raised it. Mayach got drunk on wine. Mayach was trying to take the Zayah, Mayach was trying to do the Shaka in the Chate Kadash. And instead of lifting it up, he fell. He became a drunk himself. Murgish, to avoid the passion. Too much external passion. That's how it's explained. Not going to be the same thing. They drank wine. Nich, Nesyayin, Yotza, Seid. But the Lashon Nidya has to be Misakin, Kol Advarim, or Bira, Kol Amaisim. To taste the wine of Teda and not be affected adversely, you have to be perfectly fluid, without any static, without any schmutz. Rabbi Akiva was that porous, was that pure. So the wine lifted him. The others had chesreinus, had a drop of chomets. He's talking about tzaddik and gemurim. And they drank the wine and they made him crazy. Meshul Gamach. Nodav and Aviyu passed away because they drank wine. And again, we don't have to say that it's not literal. Yeah, they drank wine. But when a tzaddik gama drinks wine, what happens? What happens? He throws up, he gets shikir. A tzaddik gama drinks wine, he's lifted up to higher madrege. But it has to be in a way of ratzei vashev, has to come back down into the world. If a Tzadik Gomer drinks wine and there's a tiny bit of homage in that Tzadik Gomer, they're not 100% pure, it has the ill effect of, of not becoming joyous from the wine, becoming sick from the wine. And this resulted in their passing away. They passed away from a kiss. But why didn't they come back? Because the way they ran to the Shina had a drop of homage. And what did the homage result in? But it was noisy, not it was quiet, it was a lack of depth and plenius in the way they ran to the Yalakus, and that's why there was no return. Okay, the second one I didn't make up, the second one says the Fadish. And the first one says the Rishad, not the Rishad. The third one is an interesting one. Hey, Allah, 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 All
How do you explain this up here? This is the common thing. Chutz for the You have a standing right there. We come to the pasuk in the halach, right? And the answer to this question, a boy say, will be enlightened by a good friend of all of ours named Kayach. <laughs> the first man to ob- uh, object, the first person to worry about hair loss is Kayach. Kayach was bald. Kayach was bald. I didn't know that. It says in Chumash. What do you think Kayach was upset about? Meshe Rabbeinu says to the Levim, every one of you, you have to be shaved like a prune. Let's say the Chumash. Let's read the title, Kolb Sodom. Because that's a cold blood of my feelings, any mukhunas we need it. There's different halachas of shaving. They took every hair of Kerach's body. And Kerach says, I know what he's doing. He's making his brother look gorgeous, making him look like prunes. Shouldn't be any competition. I'm just take the Chumash last, Chris Hashem Mikra. Kerach was bald. And you know who else was bald? Rabbi Akiva was called Karcha. Rabbi Shua ben Karcha, Karcha is Rabbi Akiva. What's the Russian? One of the Amiran Tanayim said, I think it's Taka Benaze. That all of the Chachamim are against Mika Klipa Sashum, Chutzmana Kerech Azeh. So that's what this Kerech was Nabi Akiva. Who said that? Who Benaze? This Benaze. Somchus? Somebody said it. Some great rabbi. Super guest. Okay, Makana Kukta. Anyway, what was Kerech's issue? Kerech's issue was cool on Kedosh. Everybody's homie. Why do you need a hierarchy? Why do you need this idea that you have to appoint a person who is the Melech? He's the Kohen Gadol. He's the Nasi. What happens if somebody else is as qualified as him? I think you have two. Yeah. Maybe if you're pushed a year and you don't know how to learn, okay, so you're in the next. But why do you take a person who is arguably equal to a handful of others, to a group of others, to many others, and Put him on a pedestal just because someone has to have a job. King God. And just King God. What kind of business is this? Or not because he has to have a job, because he's born into it. No, because the Abishim needs a King God. And only but one. He's the son. He was born right. into it. Why, 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 why him more than him? Well, he, he, Kedach's arguments were more sinister. He was born into, as a relative of Moshe. He was, Moshe Rabbeinu was playing politics. That's what Kedach said. Yeah? What's Taked Avon and Shabbat? What's the Pshat? The Pshat Rabbi is we live in a world called Tikkun. Tikkun means order. Order means detail and cohesion. Detail and unity. Detail means everything has to have a place. And integration and cohesion means every piece has to contribute to the greater whole. We talked before about cellular health, cellular biology. There are two rules to a healthy cell. A, it has to be healthy by itself. B, it has to connect to other cells healthily. If one of those two things are not there, it's cancer, it's death. Order, say this, requires everything having its own place. And each one contributing to the greater whole. And there is one head that we didn't pay that a person is born with two heads and didn't have a place. Yes, I cannot hold them. It can be one head. Not because somebody else isn't qualified, because this is the world. It's orderly. Could you imagine a person being born, just heads, no arms, no legs, just heads? He'd be the biggest genius in the world. He'd be sick. He wouldn't go for living. He'd be a you, know, you can only have one head and live. That's the way it is. I, if a head's a good thing, why isn't two better? If a heart's a good thing, why isn't two hearts better? If a spleen is a good thing, why aren't two spleens better? Because there's an order. And an order means, just like this is necessary, you don't want vestige, you don't want extra. And that, that hierarchy sets up a system where you have one from the Gemara Mises that are so strange. Yeah? They appointed there was Levi and there was uh, somebody else. They appointed somebody Nasi. They made somebody the head of the yeshiva. And there was somebody else who was as great as him. So what did he do? He didn't go into this medicine for all the years of his machines. He didn't go in and compete. He didn't go in and be jealous. He didn't make his own yeshiva. The Gemara of Rabbi Nabi Yishef. The Gemara says, and it says in the state of Adun Kadma, that Nabi Yishef was supposed to be a Nasi for two years. The Chachamim had arranged to make Rabbi Yishef the Nasi. Rabbi heard about it, 
and he made a coup d'etat, he got together a group of his Talmudim, and they made Rabba the Nasi. So Rabba was a Nasi for 17 years, and Yeshua didn't walk into the Bishmedim. Then Rabba passed away, and Yeshua was a Nasi for two years, and he died. So the Gemara Rabba extended Yeshua's life by 17 years. This is how it is. Rabba and Yeshua were parallel, they were equal. But there's one Nasi. Why? Because there has to be said this. A body with two heads is not, is not healthy, it's sick. It's the arms and legs. Part of that is respect. You not only made Allah in front of your Rebbe. What happens if you know as much as your Rebbe? What happens if you know Allah better than your Rebbe? If your Rebbe made a mistake? It's not about being right and wrong. You know, it's not about being an academic. I know, so I have to speak. There's an order to Taylor. Because the order Taylor has to do with the connection of Taylor and the reality. The made Allah of Nimei Sharab, what does it demonstrate? It demonstrates that theoretically there could be a hundred Moshe Rabbeinu. And there cannot be. There can only be one Moshe Rabbeinu. And again, where is the root of it? Where is the root of it? You have a Tzadik Gom. A Tzadik Gom. That the, the Moshe Rabbeinu says is greater than you and I. So he tells out in that case. If all their love for Hashem was completely deep, in other words, there was a bit of, there was a humility in it, they would never pass in front of Moshe Rabbeinu. There's the tiniest bit of chomet, not Avedis Hashem, so the restraint that is necessary to appreciate the fact that my Rebbe is here, I keep quiet, was compromised. In other words, the, the chesarin is rooted, the, what was Nadav and Avi's problem? Nadav and Avi's problem was they were almost perfect, not perfect. And almost perfect is a bad place to be. Because they had such Avas Hashem and such Yiras Hashem, they had a drop of chomet, and the drop of Chomets made that there was a deficiency in their bitl, the age is order, the Shriya Yayin, and the same is true of the Let's go to the next one, and the next one is so obvious, I already mentioned it, they refused to get married. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, sorry, Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar explains it in Shut HaShon no girl was good enough for them. But perhaps the Hasidist to it is, they wanted nothing to do with the world. Not even Ali wanted to be like Moshe Rabbein. And it's wrong! For Moshe Rabbein, it's right, and for you it's wrong. Your father, Adam Akkoyim, can't go into the Kiddush Yashmi Kippur without a wife. You need to be equal in this world. The Gemara says about Benazai. Yeah, it's a very weird thing. I've made an observation. I've never heard anybody else say this. And I think it's very interesting. Benazai married Abba Kiva's daughter. And then he separated from her. And according to the Gemara, they never lived together. The Gemara says, the Gemara says, how did Benazai know the Shir of, of, uh, of Spira? Say the Shemir he married her, and before they, they never lived with her, that's it. If nature had taken its course, she would have died in her wedding day. In other words, Ben Azay was packed from the Abish perspective, never destined to be married. But she gave Stucker, she killed the snake, so she continued living, but Ben Azay couldn't live with her. Ben Azay says, I can't. Why? I want to learn Peter. Say to your mother, what's going to be with Yeshua Shalela? But the world of the Gemara, Yiskai, Ma'il, Ma'diachin, other people will have children. But then the Halacha says, you want to learn Tehra like Benazai? You have to be as pure as Benazai. If you're going to have Machshav, Azaris, and Taivis, Nisenis, Asur, Lamri, Belay, Isha, it's a din. If a man was Makai, and Periyav, and and he's old, and he's not able to have children, a man is not allowed to be single. A woman is allowed. A man is not uh, advised, but a man has to be married. It's not just because of the time of the time you inside the Nisanis, it's because you have to live in this world. Not the Banavi with Sadiqim. I guarantee they, they didn't have problems. They were As they did, no, but they didn't have problems. Not now, off with Amor. Okay, I, 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 I don't have that passion for some reason. Um, um, but not the Banavi who, not the Banavi refused to get married. They wanted to be true separated from the world. And to be separated from the world and be in the world is very difficult. And it resulted in a premature departure. In other words, the time, again, repeating the same point, the tiny bit of Chomet that they had affected that their precious resulted not in a removal from the world but a departure from the world. Number five. It's different, it's different. It's a woman has no chiyah to be A woman has no chiyah to have children, you know that? A woman has no chiyah to have children. No, a man does. I think it is. 
A, a woman does not have to get married in the first place. There's an e from a shadow here, child. They're supposed to make the world civilized. And they, you can't work up a civil world women don't married. But the khir of people, even on men. But that's not halacha, it's a teva. They want to be married. But they're not yeah, married. Not. <laughs> Five. And this one also, it says in all the shvatim, pashat mishpatim, that by had sin, they were very, very comfortable. What happened by had sin? Let's take the pasuk. And on the Atila means the officers, the the nobility of the Jewish people, Hashem didn't send his hand. So they came by Yahweh they looked at God and they ate and they So Rashi says that there was a terrible event that took place here. And all the people who were called Atila Bene Yisrael died. None of you died. Now the Shivan's came and died. Um, on a later occasion, what happened? Baby should come down. And they're having a fabrengen. And they're saying lechayim, and they're eating and they're drinking. Now, fabrengen is a very good thing. But when the shechina comes down, behave. Yeah. is by the way, all the Svarim say, they looked at God and they ate and they drank. Eat and they doesn't mean they ate and drank food. It means that they internalized the Gilead Lakus. But the Gedayim was here, it's also the same thing. They, they experienced the shechina and they failed to remember the idea that this machitas nabdalas. They were very comfortable with the shechina. Rabbi Shai, it says in Rashi, in Parshish Kedach, same Kedach, all these stories come together. Hashem says to Kedach, morning will come and God will demonstrate who belongs to him, says Rashi. Sheva Abdul, the Gemara says, Sheva Abdul is Barak and is Barak of Elam. And God Almighty made seven separations in his world. The separation between uh, whatever it is, the, the, the heaven and the earth, the land and the sea, the night and the day, Shabbos and the weekdays, Yidn and Goyim, Koyim and Leviim, Leviim and Yisraelim. And of course, in the Gemara, it takes us in It's not seven, it's nine, so they all count as one. It's just like, there are separations, the Machitas. Just like the land. Will never be invaded by the sea. And just like the sea will never be invaded by the land. Why? Because Hashem made a Havdalah. It is a separation. You may not be able to explain it according to the laws of physics or thermodynamics or sea level, but there is a wall that separates the land from the sea and the heaven from the earth. There's a separation between Kayan and Mamavim, and you can't reach it. And Kayan said, It's all love. Hippies. Everybody's the same. Yeah? When you came to Mount Tate, what is the Shemesh Rabbeinu? The Higbalta is a heart. Put up walls. And he didn't say, why should you put up walls? We're getting married to the Amish. We're going to be intimate with Asma Say Shabbat. Why walls? The Meshach Rabbeinu says, no. Nah. There's walls. There's walls. There's machita. There's machita. It's not a free for all. You don't go where you want and how you want. There has to be respect. There has to be dignity. There's a way to connect to the Amish. Like we find, we discussed this in the beginning of the year. Who did the dancing? Only the tzaddikim. Why? To dance in the Beis Hamikdash, you have to have so much yiddin shemayim that the dancing should be filled with yiddin shemayim. It's not a hefty rock. It's sukkah. It's a party. Let's have a good time. It's the Beis Hamikdash. The Atzilei Bnei Yisrael got a little too comfortable having seen They were big tzaddikim, and they were Caleb for Gilead of course. But they, the the yira. The idea that when you stand in front of the Shekhinah, you're supposed to tremble. Not because your faith is going to eat you up, but because the Shekhinah is awesome. They got too comfortable. They got to eat and drink. They internalized their lakus. And this was a sin. And again, the root of it is a minute deficiency in their bittel, in their age zara. In, the, in their age, it was an age zara. And this is why now they run to the Eivishter, they expire. And the last one, they were not Tomei Rashi, says. it wasn't an actual Tomei. They forgot to wash their hands and their feet. Now, Rabbi said, why do you have to wash your hands and your feet? You went to the mikveh, you're 100% tired to wash your hands feet. Why, 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 why? Because God said so. Yeah? Think of this as an example. Think of this as an example. Chaim God lo yim kippur. The Chaim God lo yim kippur. The Kain Godlan Yim Kippur changed his clothes five times. Every time he changed his clothes, he went to the mikveh. 
Every time he changed his clothes, he washed his hands twice. And if he only washed nine times, that's your train more. He washed his hands before he took off his old clothes. He washed his hands and he put in his new ones. The best thing for the shi'ir is washing your hands. What to tell it? A zayid is saved in Kedusha. In Kedusha, everything is exact. And if someone gets so holy that they say, yeah, I washed my hands. I didn't wash my hands. What are you talking about? I'm tired. I went to the mikveh. I'm wearing the kuna. No, 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 no. There is an order. In Kedusha, it's things that you have to do And a seder means it can't be a liberty to do whatever you please. And I'm suggesting this one, is a, I'm going out on a limb on this one, that this, the, the, the same notion that because in Nadav Navid there were very big tzaddik and there was the tiniest chasadim, it manifested in a small deficiency in an appreciation for the mechitzas and the abdalas, the board of the Abish Hashanah in this world. And it resulted in this premature tzaddik. Okay? Shine. Hot next planet.